So, cars then leaving the grid for our next race of the day, and this is the BRSCC Mazda MX-5 Super Cup, the reversed grid third race of the weekend, which is always guaranteed to provide action and drama aplenty. And another championship that is in the balance a little bit now because Luke Herbert is starting to assert his authority a little bit now at the front end of the field. He's about 18 points clear, we think, now in the championship of Jack Harding, but it's fair to say there's a little bit of needle between the two of them and um, they have had words, shall we say, this weekend and now they line up 7th on the grid for Luke Herbert, 6th for Jack Harding, having finished 2nd in race number 2 earlier on today. But they had a bit of contact yesterday and yeah, Jack not particularly pleased with how things are panning out. But of course, it's always the way, isn't it? You talk to one driver, you get one side of the story. You talk to the other, you get a completely different version of events. And I've never once spoken to a guilty racing driver. Really, the contact, I think, in the end was decided to have been a racing incident. But uh, it was enough to cost Harding any chance of winning the race, really. Herbert, though, was able to come back through and win that first race of the weekend. And then doubled up in race number two as well. So Luke Herbert, um, the form man at the moment... And uh, he hasn't had as many wins as some others this year, but he's been mightily consistent with his podium uh, runs, podium finishes. And he'll be looking now to try and uh, add another to his talent. But these reverse grid races are always hectic. Uh, Jack Sycamore then should have had Patrick Fletcher alongside him, but Patrick Fletcher is not there. Uh, and I can't think why he wasn't there, because he finished the first race, so it will actually be Sycamore then, looking for his first ever victory, who essentially lines up on pole position with Steve Roberts and Aidan Hills, row two, row three for James Blake Baldwin and Jack Harding, then Luke Herbert, double winner so far this weekend, with Will Stacey alongside, and the man that just missed out on the grid reversal. 20 minutes, the third race of the weekend for the Mazda MX-5 Super Cup, getting underway. After quite a long hold, now they are released and a good start made by Jack Harding there. The 43 car already up into about level third and finds a gap and goes for it. What a start that was for Jack Harding and he squeezes his way through almost into second place. He's got his nose ahead. He's going to try and go right around the outside of Jack Sycamore for the race lead as well. Surely not. No, Sycamore will just about hang on. Harding there goes from the outside to the inside. He's late on the break. Side by side, they're going to make contact if they're not too careful. And Jack Sycamore, who is after his first ever victory in the category, gets nerfed off wide and it's Harding that comes through to lead the race from sixth on the grid and Luke Herbert four abreast up the inside line has lost positions because Will Stacey's ahead of him and now the number nine car of James Blake Baldwin trying to go through as well so a really really good start for Harding and not such a good one for Herbert means that Jack Harding suddenly has a genuine chance to take some points out of the championship leader Luke Herbert through clear ways they go then Sycamore second Roberts third Hills fourth Stacey fifth and then James Blake Baldwin sixth so Herbert has stayed where he was in seventh place on the grid Except he's lost a position, really, because it was it basically became sixth with the demise of Patrick Fletcher. But with Will Stacey getting ahead of him, that is not good news for Luke Herbert. Aiden Hills up the inside of Steve Roberts into Paddock. And Steve leaves him room. Good stuff there. Wheel to wheel through the corner. Roberts will have a better run up the hill, but Hills has the inside line. However, he's going to get blocked in, I think, behind Jack Sycamore. So Roberts might be able to hang tough around the outside. How's this one going to pan out? Roberts out over the curb, though, gets a bit sideways. And Aiden Hills, I think, will go through. But now Roberts tries to fight back as Hills goes to the outside of Jack Sycamore. Three into one won't go. And it's going to be Hills, I think, that comes out on top with better momentum off the corner. But now they're all starting to gang up on each other. Blake Baldwin's there. And Luke Herbert is right in the Hornets' nest now. The number one car, the blue car at the back of this queue. He wants to make progress. In a way, he needs to make progress. But he cannot afford to get a damage car and a non-finish because then that will be not a huge disaster necessarily for his championship campaign it will become a drop score but he really doesn't want to have to use that those drop scores unless he absolutely has to he's up alongside will stacy is he's trying to get alongside the rob boston racing car jack harding though is escaping up the road one and a half seconds clear and already with the fastest lap as well he's gone but what is going to happen further back herbert up the inside of stacy through paddock hill ben they go the two blue cars wheel to wheel up halewoods hill into druid's corner ahead of them sycamore has contact there with steve roberts and uh, roberts ends up drifting out wide james blake balden gets up the inside of him as a result of that and they will run wheel to wheel down the hill but Roberts has the inside line again for the left-hander, but as we know, you can go around the outside here and find good traction on the exit. That's what Blake Baldwin's trying to do. That will bring Herbert into play as well. Herbert, having now completed that manoeuvre on Will Stacey, goes to the outside of Steve Roberts, decides better against it. He needs to try and pick his moment here because the two cars in front are still side by side. And if Herbert plays his card right, he might be able to take advantage of this, but I think 
And they're still side by side coming off the corner, would you believe? James Blake Baldwin and Steve Roberts refusing to give way, but I think Baldwin sh should now be able to complete the manoeuvre into Paddock Hill Bend by the looks of it. Oh, no, Roberts keeps on coming round the outside. They're almost level across the start finish line. And at some point, one of them will have to give. But well, this has been a full lap now of side by side racing between these two. And they are still side by side up the hill. And Luke Herbert doesn't know where to go. If he goes left, he leaves the door open for the cars behind. But if he goes right, he gets blocked by the defensive James Blake Baldwin. Finally, Blake Baldwin is able to complete the manoeuvre. And now Steve Roberts has to fend off Luke Herbert. And. I don't think Luke will go around the outside of Graham Hill. He's going to try and cut back to the eight, uh, late exit, though, and he's done that. Gets alongside Roberts, who's trying to squeeze him down to the grass. That's forceful stuff there from Roberts, but Herbert keeps on uh, trying to run up the inside into Surtees. Backs out of it, goes back to the inside again into Clearways. Backs out of that as well. This is a driver who's very much driving with the championship in mind. He knows that he's got these drop scores to fall back on, so he doesn't need to take any huge risks here. He is now back alongside Steve Roberts, though, and this time around should be able to make a fairly easy move into Paddock Hill Bend, you would imagine. Herbert gets his nose in front by the line, and as he goes to the braking zone, yes, he goes through. So, typically breathless stuff here in the opening stages of the race. At the front of the field, Jack Harding and Aidan Hills are 1.7 seconds apart, first to second, and it's Harding who's just set another fastest lap, as you saw, so... The lead gap for the time being is going out. Oh, Blake Walden up the inside of Sycamore for third. And Jack Sycamore, who got his first ever podium last time at uh, Croft in race number three. And uh, he now wants, uh, sorry, it's Anglesey, excuse me. And he now wants to try and double up again here at Brands Hatch if he can. He's not going to just wave Blake Baldwin by. Herbert now then into fifth position as Blake Baldwin tries again to get up the inside of Sycamore, who continues to close the door on him. And Blake Baldwin, I think, really had to lift off the throttle there to avoid contact. Back to Paddock. Sycamore defending. Now, this is all going to start stacking up. And again, Herbert finds himself right in the middle of it. But this is one of the, the real skills involved with these reverse grid races. You have to pick your way past drivers who maybe you're not used to racing with. Blake Baldwin around the outside of Sycamore. They're going to rub, I think, on the exit of the corner. They have, and here comes Herbert. Gets himself alongside Blake Baldwin. That's the outside line into Graham Hill Bend. Didn't want to do that because he knew that that would leave him vulnerable to attack from Steve Roberts, with whom he did battle yesterday for the victory. And this big queue of cars gets bigger because Gary Townsend and Paul Sheard are starting to join in the front. So we've got about seven cars now in a line fighting over third place. Out of clearways they go then. Lead gap stable at 1.7 seconds, but another new fastest lap for Jack Harding means it goes out to 1.8 now. Good pace here being shown by the man who's second place in the championship. Where was Luke Herbert going then? Taking a really wide line into Paddock to try and get the better exit. He's over the curb. He's up the inside. They're going to be three abreast nearly as they come off the corner. In the end, though, they stay in the same order. But that was a big, big bite of the curb taken. Will Stacey up the inside of Steve Roberts. That was an opportunistic attempt to move going through Druids. Don't think it actually worked out in his favour in the end. Oh, James Blake Baldwin again up the inside and there's contact this time, surely. Yes, Sycamore goes around onto the grass. He goes and Luke Herbert gets two in one and that was exactly what he needed to happen. They handed it to him on a plate and Luke Herbert goes into third position and that was a bit of a lunge there from Blake Baldwin. Sycamore was always going to turn into the corner and in the end it's benefited neither of them because they both lost two positions and Blake Baldwin didn't even get past Sycamore anyway. Now he's got Will Stacey up the inside of him as they come through Clark Curve. And that was a little unnecessary, you felt, really. Both of them could have probably left a bit more room. But Graham Hill Bend is a difficult attempting place to make a move, but it's a difficult place to make a clean move because the ground does sort of flatten out quite quickly. The cars tend to understeer wide. And that's exactly what happened, I think, there. And contact was made. Sickwall did well to save the car. But Luke Herbert, as ever, Teflon-coated, has been able to pick his way through without any contact, without any major drama. Yes, he's lost any chance of realistically fighting for the victory in this race, but that doesn't really matter to him. He's in second, he's got some clean air now, and he might just be able to go and nick the fastest lap points as well. Blake Baldwin's race continues to unravel now. Oh, oh that was... Now, what was that all about? Contact with Gary Townsend going down the Cooper Straight. And... Hmm, yes. They'll move on from that, I think. That was all a little unnecessary. I think Blake Baldwin getting a bit hot under the collar, and he's... Uh, well, Gary Townsend, the leading Masters driver in this race, by the way, drivers over the age of 50, who is breathing down his neck, trying to get past him. So Blake Baldwin ends up then down in seventh place after that, hence his frustration. 
and finds himself now with an awful lot of work to do. So through the top of the circuit they go then and Luke Herbert far from escaping from Steve Roberts is actually now starting to feel the pressure again so there is still potential for this to start to change around again. Keep it straight once more then. And through Surtees, there they are, look, third and fourth places, Herbert and Roberts. Jack Harding still 1.7 clear of Aiden Hills. They're running identical lap times, more or less, lap by lap, a tenth here, a tenth there. Well, you're using half a tenth here and half a tenth there, really. Not really anything to choose lap time-wise between the two of them, but Luke Herbert's got Steve Roberts now really starting to apply the pressure. Goes to the outside into Paddock, and Steve, for the time being, has the luxury of not being under pressure from the cars behind. So he's got free reign here. He's got a free scope to attack Luke Herbert in front. Luke Herbert with his two victories this weekend. That means that he's now won 16 of these races. Jack Harding has the most on 19, and it's been, it was a question from the start of the season as to who would get... Uh, who would end the season at the top of the all-time wins list. It's likely to be one of those two. Steve Roberts himself is on that win list. Three victories in his time in the MX5 Super Cup. And Stacey, a one-time winner. James Blake Baldwin. Oh, that was a cheeky move, but that is the clear ways move. You come from a long way back, you sell the dummy, you dive to the inside and hope against hope that the car you're overtaking doesn't close the door because then you will make contact and thankfully they avoided that. So Blake Baldwin, I think he's going to move ahead here. So this is the sixth position for James. Race winner here 12 months ago. And uh, yeah, James Blake Baldwin um, won the this equivalent race basically last year, the reverse grid race. And in the first two Brands Hatch races, he was... Um, on the podium as well, had a first, a second and a third here last year, James Blake Baldwin. I can see Patrick Fletcher going back out of the pit lane now, so whatever the issue was that kept him out uh, in the uh, pit lane at the start of the race has now been rectified, it would seem, and he's back on the way, several laps down there, onto the 11th lap now of the race. There's Gary Townsend with Paul Sheard behind him, this is for the Masters lead, and Paul Sheard making a, a one-off return to the MX-5 Super Cup, but he's done a bit more racing this year, actually, uh, than in the past couple of seasons. He's raced in the MX-5 Super Series a few times, raced yesterday in the BRSCC Club Sport Endurance Race and won it with a, an overtake at the very last corner of a 45-minute mini endurance race in a car that he shared with Aidan Hills. And... Uh, Paul Sheard closing in on Townsend, but not yet been able to find a way past him. Similarly, Blake Baldwin still cannot get past Jack Sycamore. He's quicker off the corner, but Will Stacey's actually quicker than both of them off the turn. Now, how's this one going to work out? Because Blake Baldwin's going to try to go around the outside at Surtees, I think. That's uh, not on, surely. I think it might be, though. Looking out of the window, yes, he's gone through, and so too has Will Stacey. So, um, two places lost there for Stacey. That was an audacious move around the outside for Blake Baldwin. There they are, look. James Blake Baldwin has gone now into fifth position. And that one was squeaky clean as well. Not a hint of contact between them. I think he got a bit of assistance from Will Stacey down the Cooper Strait. Bit of a bump draft. And that was enough in the end to complete the manoeuvre around the outside into Surtees. So there's Luke Herbert then, still third. Steve Roberts fourth. Fastest lap still belongs to Jack Harding. So Harding at the moment on for 102 points whilst it would be 96 for Herbert, so that's a six-point swing for Harding. And all of a sudden, the points that Herbert's taken out of him in the first race, uh, first two races, sort of starts to come back now to Harding. And this is exactly what Herbert did to Harding last time out at Croft. Uh, sorry, Harding did to Herbert, excuse me, last time out at Croft. Harding won the first two races, but with Herbert having a second in one and a third in the other. And then in race three at Croft, it was Herbert that came through with the race victory, and Harding... Uh, sorry, with second place, excuse me, and Harding down in third. And um, Harding actually ended up losing points over the weekend, despite having won two races. But that's how this slightly quirky point system works. You score 100 for a win, 98 for second, 96 for third, and then 94, 92, 90, 88, down in two-point increments right the way through. So each position is worth two points. And um, that means that 
if you finish one place ahead of someone in the first two races, but then three places behind them in race three, it's a net loss, basically, and you've still had a good weekend, and you can come out of it feeling a bit robbed sometimes, but uh, that is just the way it works, really. So Herbert now needs to try and keep Roberts at bay, but I'm watching Blake Baldwin's lap times with interest here because he was faster than the uh, two cars in front of him by about three tenths. In fact, he was quicker than anyone by about three tenths on the previous lap. So he should be able to catch these two now. And if he does, that will spur Roberts on, I think. For the time being, Steve might be sort of trying to work with Luke Herbert to try and either A, catch the leaders, although that's not likely to happen, but B, make sure that they don't get caught by the cars behind. But Blake Baldwin on that particular lap was, again, two tenths quicker than them. So Blake Baldwin about 1.7 seconds back at the moment, but he does look as though he might catch them. Jack Sycamore trying to retaliate up the inside of Will Stacey, but to no avail. And then the Masters lead battle was side by side as well going through Drews, but Gary Townsend has been able to hang on, so no change just yet in that order. Steve Roberts, now what's Roberts waving out there as he went down into Surtees? Was he waving or was he fiddling around with something on the roll cage? Not too sure. Here comes the Masters lead battle then. Townsend and Sheard, and then uh, David Henderson and Nick Rutter are next in line. Henderson is not a Masters contender, but Rutter is. And there is George Grant, who had a, a nice chat with earlier on. Interestingly, George was uh, saying that uh, he wasn't interested really in racing in the MX5 Super Series, the Super Series that was brought in as a, uh, basically using the same cars as these. Uh, the idea being that it wasn't a championship, it was a little bit less of a high-pressure environment. And George said, well, yeah, I enjoy racing in the Super Series, but you're only going to learn how to do this by learning against by racing against the best. And uh, that's what um, George is doing, racing in the Super Cup. And he says, yeah, I might be towards the back, but I am learning and I'm having fun. And that really is the main thing. So uh, George Grant, a stalwart of the championship these days, got his dad here to support him as well this weekend. And um, George one of the big characters of the MX-5 paddock. And, uh, he is currently running in 12th place, which is fourth in the Masters class. So there goes Henderson and Rutter. With the sideways Paul Sheard trying to find a way past Gary Townsend for the, the Masters lead. Speaking of the lead, by the way, the lead gap is going out now. It's up to 3.1 seconds, so Aiden Hills just doesn't seem to have the pace to go after Jack Harding. Very similar situation to what we saw really in race three at Snetterton at the start of the year, where uh, they had a goal at the inside of Gary Townsend. But yeah, Snetterton at the start of the season, we saw a very close race one and two. And then in race three, Jack Harding, just similar to today, made meteoric progress through the field, got the lead and pulled away before anyone else really broke free. And that's exactly what he's done today. Aiden Hills tried to go after him, but even by the time Aiden got into second place, he was a second or so behind. So, Jack Harding, once you make that break, once you break the toe in MX5 racing, be it the Mark III Super Cup cars we're watching now, all the older Mark I cars, if you break the toe, it's very, very hard for them to catch you then, even if they're working together. That seems to be the issue here. I don't think Aiden Hills has got the pace to go after him, really. Real question going to happen for third place where it's still Herbert from Roberts by two tenths there they go right on cue through Paddock and James Blake Baldwin now he is catching he's only one and a half seconds back now but he's only taking a, a tenth or so a lap so not really a huge amount Jack Sycamore though is up the inside of Will Stacey and that is a change for sixth position I think Sycamore going through is he yes on the exit of the corner he's got it so Jack Sycamore now starts to regroup a bit after getting rather muscled out of line earlier on after that contact at this corner with James Blake Ball. Little Stacey fighting back though as they go down the Cooper Strait. And no, Will didn't force the issue there sensibly into Surtees. Clear ways they go then. On to another lap. Three minutes left on the clock. This is the 18th lap being completed now for the drivers. As they now get into the closing stages of this third race of the weekend. Black and white warning flag for Will Stacey as well for exceeding track limits, we have to assume, but he'll be a little more preoccupied with the fact that he's just lost a position, I think. Blue Paddock gets a good exit there, tries to get back up the inside of Sycamore into Druids. Nothing doing, though. As Jack Sycamore fends him off once again. They turn through the right-hander, back downhill again into Graham Hill Bend. And Stacey... 
latching onto the rear bumper of Jack Sycamore, just trying to force the mistake out of the AD Motorsport driver. And he is quicker off Graham Hill Bend again, as he was a lap ago. Doesn't quite get alongside on this occasion, though. Not about clearways. This is a possible overtaking opportunity. He goes to the outside line, tries to cut back to the second apex, get underneath Sycamore, maybe onto the pit straight. That looked good, but no, not quite enough to complete the pass and fully get himself alongside. Two more laps to go by my reckoning then for the race leader who is at Graham Hill Bend, Jack Harding, who we haven't really seen much of in, uh, in this race because he's just asserted his authority really and pulled away. Sycamore and Stacey side by side again into Druids with Stacey trying the outside line. It's been a good clean battle between the two of them so far. A glimpse there of Gary Townsend who was still still ahead of uh, Paul Sheard, sorry. No change for the Masters lead either. Great racing there. They're all sort of pairing off throughout the field, aren't they? Top two fairly well spaced out. Then two cars fighting for third, two for fifth, two for seventh, two for ninth. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. There is your fight for third. And still Luke Herbert then, who has it. And two laps to go now, excuse me. So they're just going to squeeze in an extra lap. So two more laps to go. Luke Herbert, third position there. Steve Roberts has been with him for a while now, about just over half the race. Hasn't been able to get through. Is he going to be able to get through them for the flag? These two very evenly matched drivers. But you sense that Roberts is sort of trying everything just to stay with Herbert here. He doesn't seem to have enough of a, an extra speed advantage to actually get through. And Luke Herbert is not one for making many mistakes. So... Roberts will have to get inventive here. That's a good exit there from Graham Hill Bend. He's been doing this the last couple of laps I've spotted out of the window. Trying to get alongside into Surtees, but then Herbert's always going to defend into this corner, clearways. And the only chance that Roberts has then, really, is to try and tee up the better exit. They're still being caught by Blake Baldwin, by the way, but again, only by a tenth or so a lap. So just over 1.1 seconds was the margin between fourth and fifth last time out. There, though, is the race leader, Jack Harding, onto his final lap of the race. And he goes through Paddock Hill Bend then. A very comfortable 4.3 seconds clear of Aiden Hills, who in turn is 6.7 ahead of Luke Herbert. The question will be whether Herbert hangs on to third, but I fancy his chances. I don't think Steve Roberts is going to throw everything at this. And now James Blake Baldwin is actually pretty much with them as well, so it will be a three-way fight to the flag for those three. But the leading two having a fairly calm time of it, really. So Jack Harding... He's going to come through then, it would seem, to take his 20th career victory. The first driver to get to 20 MX5 Super Cup race victories and his 51st podium appearance then. Jack Harding comes through and takes another race victory and crucially takes six championship points away from his big rival, Luke Herbert, who is just going to hang on to third place, I think. Aiden Hills comes home in second, and Luke Herbert at the line is just going to do enough. He hangs on to third then with Roberts fourth and Blake Baldwin fifth. Jack Sycamore is sixth, but Stacey should come home seventh, although those two were close together, of course, on the run to the flag. And they, in fact, are almost overlapping as they cross the line, but it will be Sycamore ahead. So Jack Sycamore with another solid finish then gets sixth place then. Well, Stacey seventh, and then for the Masters, it was Gary Townsend just ahead of Paul Sheard by three tenths of a second. Then Nick Rutter and David Henderson, who swapped before the end with George Grant. Now, he was racing Chris Richardson, I noticed, out of my window, coming to the flag. And Chris Richardson has gone past him, so Richardson gets into 12th place. George Grant drops down to 13th, and then it will be there um, Patrick Fletcher who was a couple of laps down with Simon Baldwin, sadly an early retirement from that race again. So, entertaining stuff then. And really, for Jack Harding, that was just the race he wanted to tighten up this championship margin, going to Silverstone next time out. We're on the short national circuit at Silverstone, which should be an epic race in support of the Fun Cup UK Championship, which is also setting itself up for a fascinating final couple of races of the season. And uh, we, I'll be there. Can't wait for the uh, the Silverstone meeting. That Silverstone National Circuit always produces good racing. Not the most complex of tracks. My word, does it provide exciting racing. A bit like this one here at Brands Hatch, although this is a technically demanding circuit. One that definitely is a fan amongst the fans and the drivers alike. And Jack Harding, I think, rather enjoying himself here as well at the moment. Then he takes the victory. Second place goes to Aidan Hills. 
and uh, that will be uh, Aiden's 17th appearance on the podium with Luke Herbert third uh, which will be his 48th podium appearance so the cream always does tend to rise to the crop even in those reverse grid races Steve Roberts fourth James Blake Baldwin is fifth and Jack Sycamore sixth with Will Stacey Gary Townsend Paul Sheard and Nick Rutter rounding out the top ten then it is David Henderson, Chris Richardson, George Grant, Patrick Fletcher, Simon Baldwin and Bradley Kenton on starter, sadly. We've heard that he'd had issues in the previous race and unfortunately the Essex and Kent Motorsport squad not having a great day. Lewis unfortunately had a disappointing TCR race and uh, Bradley, his fortune's not much better unfortunately in the Super Cup.